Happy Sabbath, and welcome to Old Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church on this beautiful Sabbath morning here on Long Island. We are so thankful that you have chosen to tune in to join us, uh, whether you're watching on our church website or on Facebook, we welcome you. For our members that are here today, it's good to have you with us to worship the Lord. Uh, keep praying for us, keep praying, because as you know, the uh, COVID cases, they say, are increasing. Um, so we're, we're trying to do what we can here locally to be able to have a few of our members attend here uh, week by week. So please pray for us on that. And we just want to update, not only for those here locally, but those watching online. For, for now, it, we are really staying to members only. So if you have a friend or a guest, maybe that would be a Sabbath to stay home and view online with them. We want to be careful about how many folks we're having come in here. And so our church is limited with its seating. Uh, three churches in the Greater New York Conference have already closed because of COVID cases. Three that had opened had closed because of the COVID cases. And so we want to make sure that you please help us with that. Make sure if you've, if you've been sick, uh, the, 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 the policy is if you've been sick in the past two weeks, runny nose, coughing, fever, smell, any of those things, Please uh, refrain from attending the church here, as well as be careful what you do at your other locations. But especially here for the church, we want to be able to uh, have those things open. We do send an email out. Uh, we will begin sending email out for those who would like to come. Remember, on Monday morning, by Wednesday noon, we're done with requests. And so we still have folks on Friday night, Sabbath morning, sending in requests. And listen, we're sorry, it's already closed. So Wednesday noon, it's closed. And we've been, uh, by Tuesday, being filled up for that Sabbath. And so if you would like to attend, please watch for that email on Monday morning and let us know as soon as possible so that we can uh, get in touch with you. After Wednesday noon, we are not accepting any other requests for that week for that Sabbath. Sending in early won't help us either. So we will wait until Monday when we send out, and then we'll start sending in requests. We've got some all ready to come, and they're sending the requests today for next week. And thank you for your eagerness. We are so happy for that. But we won't start accepting those until Monday. And then please be mindful that when you do come, we need you to bring that email with us, uh, with you, either a printed copy or by uh, electronic, some way to let us know. We also have made our staff, we have our staff signing in, we're having everything. We have a special baby dedication today, wonderful. Latoya, good to have you and your family here with us. They all had a list and everything, so we're doing what we need. And I don't know how much longer we'll be able to have service here. So we're, we're going to go as long as we can and as long as we're able to do it healthfully. So please pray for us. Um, if the, if the, the state closes churches, then we will go to just live stream and we won't be having anybody uh, allowed to come here to the church. So thank you for that. Please, if you have any questions, you can go to our website, go to Facebook. You'll see all the details in there, all the requirements of the conference, as well as what the state and the CDC, all of those things are listed there. This Wednesday night, there's no prayer meeting. That's the eve of Thanksgiving. We want you to stay home and be thankful for the blessings that, that you've had through this difficult year. It's almost over. Amen. It's almost over. <laughs> we hope 2021 brings a little bit of happiness, a little more cheer. But anyway, want to let you know, no prayer meeting on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, next Saturday night, a week from tonight, Saturday night, the conference program, Hope Still Smiles, will begin at 730 I believe the first speaker is Mark Finley, and he will, join, he will lead us in a, a wonderful sermon next Saturday night at 7.30. That will be on Facebook and on the Greater New York Conference website. You'll be able to see the links where you can connect to that. That is, excuse me, that's a virtual program, and they have a lot of good speakers, a lot of good speakers over the two-week period that they're going to be doing this. So please, it'll be in the evening at 7.30. You're able to join and watch that online. And so uh, we want to encourage you to take advantage of that, to encourage uh, our family and friends. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for all of your prayers as we continue to navigate through this challenging year. But we know that God is on the throne, and with His grace, we can do all things. So again, welcome. Happy Sabbath. May the Lord bless you as we worship together. At this time, we'll have our call to worship.
Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this uh, moment in time that we can pause and worship you. We thank you for the Sabbath, a day set apart for us to worship you. And as we gather uh, through live stream and here locally, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will be poured out upon us. As we worship and fellowship, Lord, may you be in the midst of our time together today. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Today I have a reading from the stewardship office at Adventist.org. It's called Prem's Sacrifice. After Prem completed his medical training, he chose to live on a small stipend in a remote town in India as a global mission pioneer. Before Prem arrived there were no Adventists in the region. The nearest hospital is several hours away, so pioneer Prem used his talents that God had given him to serve the town's sick. He transformed his living room into a clinic where he lovingly teaches the locals how to adopt a holistic lifestyle. He also treats their illnesses. He then prays for the heavenly physician to heal and bless them. Through Prem's compassionate words and actions, many of his former patients now come each Sabbath to the local church building. There they eagerly wait for Prem to finish treating patients in his clinic so he can teach them more about Jesus. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. Global mission pioneers sacrificed much to take Jesus to the unreached cities, towns, and villages around the world and to put his method of outreach into action. The question is, what are we willing to sacrifice to support them? The annual sacrifice offering collected in some countries on November 14th is a good time to make a special gift to support the work of Global Mission Pioneers. Um, part of your promise, regular and systematic offering already supports the Global Mission Pioneers, but if in addition you would like to help share Jesus with unreachable people, write annual sacrifice offering on your tithe envelope or visit globalmission.org backslash giving and select Global Mission's annual sacrifice offering. And with a prayer, dear Lord, help us to sacrifice for mission as you sacrificed in our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. We have a baby dedication this morning, which I am so thankful to have the Rodriguez family here with us today. And so I'm going to invite them to go ahead and come on up here onto the platform with us. And we are going to have a special prayer for baby Idris as we dedicate him this morning. He is looking so nice in his outfit, in his wonderful dress here we have mom dad grandma and all of the family so thankful for them to join us here today we are glad that we are able to even in the midst of covid do something special like this i know latoya we've been trying almost all year hasn't it because of covid and the schedule and church closed and back open and shut and so i uh, finally got to, together so that we can have this special time here this morning and so good to see all of you here with us today and i want to read a passage of scripture of why we do this special service is because we're following the example of jesus you know in the bible there was the time when the mother were bringing their children to Jesus because they wanted Jesus to bless them, to lay his hands on them and to say a special blessing for them. And the disciples were confused about that. They didn't understand. They thought that Jesus was too busy for children. And so Jesus helped them understand the lesson that he's never too busy for children, that children are important. They are, they are precious and they're needful. And so we have in the Bible this special passage and where it says in Matthew 23, talking about this experience, Matthew 23 
where Jesus was dealing with this situation. Um, now I lost my place. It's not actually Matthew 23. It's actually Matthew 19, verse 18. It says, Then little children were brought to Jesus that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and then they departed. So there was a special blessing for the children. And understand that we are blessing Idris today. But know that we're blessing the family and we're blessing you because it takes a community, it takes a church group, it takes a church family to be able to raise our children because they see in us what it means to be a Christian. They see in us what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And if they see you strain, then that is something they have to struggle with because they are now saying, look, I'm supposed to follow Jesus, but mom and dad are not following Jesus. Then they come to church and they say, well, mom and dad's following Jesus and I want to follow Jesus, but people in the church are not following Jesus. You see how that spreads out? So it's a community today we are asking the Lord to be with us and to help us so that when we pray this prayer, it's not just for the child here today, but it is for each and every one of us that we will recommit to following Jesus and be an example for not just the children that are here, but for the children that are not here, so that we can say, like Jesus, that we will be an example for him. And so, because of that, I'm going to let you hold on to Idris, and I'm going to invite the family, if you will bow with me, and church, if you will also bow, and we'll have a special prayer this morning. Father in heaven, today we bring before you this wonderful child, baby Idris, and ask that you will please Anoint him in a special way with your Holy Spirit. Pour out upon him the divine gift that each of us needs so desperately. I pray that you will anoint mom and dad and all of the family that are a part of raising this young child. That they will be drawn closer to you. That they will be an example that as Idris grows day by day and the Holy Spirit works in his life, he will grow in strength and in wisdom and purity to be a wonderful child of God. So Father, today as we lay hands on him and anoint him, we are trusting in the divine grace from above to be with this family in a special way. I pray that you will anoint our church, that we will be an example for him, that you will anoint our families, that each of us will be example for the children that are here. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we can do this special service today. And we do it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Congratulations. I tell you what, beautiful. Well done, your brother. Good job. Thank you. Now, we have a special certificate and a special gift for you today. And so, uh, Sister Sharon is going to bring those things up for us. All right. There we go, and there is the, the book, and inside is the certificate, so we have everything official there today. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will continue with our service, and inviting Larry to come and lead us in our scripture reading. Today's scripture reading is Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. That's Luke chapter 18, 1 to 8. And it reads, Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and and not to lose heart, saying, In a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my, from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. 
Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? May we be blessed by the reading of God's word. Sabbath church family. Happy Sabbath to those online, those who are watching at home. This is the hour of our worship service where we seek the Lord in prayer. And we do so individually and collectively as a church family. We even do it virtually through, through live stream service. So if you have special requests, if you have um, special prayers that you want answered, feel free to um, indicate through our website, send an email, send a text message, however you can get those in, we'll pray for you. And those of you who are gathered here, if you have a special request, indicate by a raised hand. We're gonna kneel, we'll sing our prayer song, and then I'll lead out in prayer. glorious and eternal Father in heaven. What a blessing and what a privilege, Lord, to come to you in prayer, to have this opportunity as mortal human beings, Lord, to approach you as the King of the universe. And we do so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, who covers all of our sins, who died for us and who redeemed us. We pray, Father, that as we've come here today, Many of us are still at home, many of us are still secluded, Lord, and as we are now approaching the season of Thanksgiving and of Christmas and of a new year, there's so much uncertainty, Lord, in this earth, and there's so much trouble upon this earth. We pray, Father, for this world and for the things that are going on. And as this pandemic is now starting to surge again, Lord, we pray for protection. I sincerely pray for protection over each and every person, Lord, who is within the sound of my voice. I pray that you would watch over their households and continue, Lord, to keep them safe. Amen. Bless them abundantly and bless their family members. Continue, Lord, to give us strength and courage in this difficult time. And as there's so much uncertainty in the world politically, Lord, we pray that your will will be done and that ultimately, Lord, we know that you are in charge of all things. Help us to continue to trust and have faith in you. Amen. I pray, Father, for those special requests for those who have family members who are going through uh, medical issues, Lord. I pray for healing and for your healing grace upon them, Lord. Continue to comf comfort them and keep them under your care. Be with those who have lost family members, Lord. I pray that you comfort and console them as well. As we've come here today, Lord, on this, the Holy Sabbath day, I pray that you would bless our hearts and minds. Help us to cast aside all the cares and worries of this past week. Help us to focus and to meditate upon spiritual things today. Help us to truly call this day a delight and to rejoice in it, Lord, for you created us for us. 
because you knew, Lord, that we needed to cast aside these things that are all around us. And as we come to worship service, Lord, we pray that you would bless each and every aspect of it. I pray that you would bless the pastor as he leads out in today's message. Bless him as you've blessed the other two messages, Lord. I pray that this third part in his series would be a blessing as well. And be with everything that is done here, the, the songs that are sung, the prayers that are offered, the instruments that are played. I pray that it will all be done for your honor and glory. I pray that those who are tuning in, that the sound and the audio and the video system, Lord, will all work decently and in order, and that it will all be done for your honor and glory and for the glory of Jesus. Bless us and keep us to this end, I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Truly, we're blessed to have your talents with us here at this church this morning. And welcome again. Happy Sabbath. Trust that you are making it through this incredible year, this incredible week, and have this moment of time to pause and to receive the Sabbath blessing together. I'd like to invite you to pray with me today. Father, we invite your presence again to bless us as we open your word and study this morning, where we ask it in Christ's precious name. Amen. So we are part three of Persistent Faith. We have looked at two stories. Today will be our third one. This story is nestled in between the first two that we looked at. The first one, you remember, was of the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years, typifying the Old Testament, touch Jesus, was healed. Jesus raised the young girl that was 12, died, representing the New Testament, bringing the New Testament to life with Jesus. And then we went uh, forward in time to blind Bartimaeus, where he persistently pressed on to receive the healing and to also receive sight, called upon the son of David, acknowledging the Messiah. And now we have the story that we're concluding with. Some have entitled it the unjust judge. Others have titled it the persistent woman. This parable, brothers and sisters, is for those of us living in the last days. I want to repeat that. If you've not spent time with this parable, I encourage you to do so. It's eight verses, two players. But this parable is for people living in the last days. So if you believe we're living in the last days, this parable is for you. If you believe that 2020, we are closer to the second coming of Jesus, than when we first believe, this parable is for us. It's for the church. I want to just go over our definitions again because I want us to have these in our mind as we unfold this passage of Scripture today. Persistent, continuing firmly or obstinately in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. And we're going to see that today with this dear lady. We're going to see this lady today have the definition of persistent even applied to her story. Continuing firmly or obstinately in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. To be obstinate, you remember we said, is stubbornly refusing to change one's opinion or chosen course of action despite attempts to persuade one to do so. This is important to understand. If you're going to be obstinate, be obstinate for Jesus and what Jesus' word says. Don't be obstinate for your opinion. Don't be obstinate for what you want Don't be obstinate for what you think is right, but be obstinate for Jesus and for His Word. Amen? Amen. The text we were putting these together with, Hebrews 11.1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Romans 10.17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Hebrews 11.6, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And finally, 1 Corinthians 2, 5, it says that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Living in November 2020, we have got to have a faith that is trusting in the word of God and not in the wisdom of men. Or you're going to get swept away. You're going to get overwhelmed with discouragement, with bitterness, with animosity, with anger, and all these emotions. The devotional book, Our High Calling, on page 119 says, Faith is not a happy flight of feeling. It is simply taking God at His word, believing that He will fulfill His promise because He said He would. So if God says, I'll forgive you, guess what? Believe it. God says, I'm with you, believe it. If God says, I will avenge, I will have vengeance, I will take care of it, I will bring justice to you, then believe it. So it's A.D. 71, A.D. 31, A.D. 31. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and on his way coming from Perea, he has this experience 
where he is met by the Pharisees. And you really, in this passage in Luke, you have kind of a, a, a parable clumping together. There are several parables that he goes through. And then the, the Pharisees come to Jesus and they tell him, they say, what will be the sign of your coming? And then we go into Luke chapter 17. Now, Luke chapter 17 parallels with Matthew 24. And we know Matthew 24. We're pretty familiar with Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is the signs of the times. You remember? Jesus' disciples came to him and he said, Lord, tell us, what will it be like when Jerusalem's destroyed in the end of the world? And in Matthew 24, he starts listing all these things. Well, Luke 17 is the parallel passage to that. So set the context here. He is going to Jerusalem. He's about to give his life for the ransom for our sins. He's talking to the Pharisees and they're asking what's going to happen. He gives this little picture of what it will be like in the last days, which, by the way, represents very much what we're living in now. And then in that context, he comes and he says here in verse 1, then he spoke a parable to them. So understand this. He's talking about last day events. He's talking about what will happen and what will take place when right before Christ comes the second time. And then he gives us this parable, which means that it should be something that we are listening to because of its significance. Jesus doesn't do things without a reason. Amen? He has a purpose in what he does. Everything is thought out and calculated. Everything is laid out for us because he knows that as we come to the end of time, it will become more and more intense. Our faith will be challenged. Our religion will be tested. We are going to be put in situations where we got to decide, are we going to stay close to Jesus or are we just going to go along? Are we going to give up? Are we going to... And so here Christ says, Luke 17, here's the things, last day events. Here's going to... And once he gets finished with that, then, verse 1, chapter 18, if you have your Bible, so you can follow along with us. Then he spoke a parable to them that men... Now, depending on translation, some put in their disciple, all right? In other words, it's talking about the followers of God. So maybe we should do that. Then... He says, oh, well, let me start over. Then he spoke a parable to them, talking to his disciples, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Last days, signs of the times, Jesus is coming. Nestled in between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus, things are going to get to the place where it becomes very difficult. And he's saying, in the last days, I want people to know, I want people to understand that they are to what? That they are to always pray and not lose heart. What does it mean to lose heart? What does it mean to faint and to give up? That's what it's talking about. So what it's talking about. It's talking about that, that things are going to be so bad, things are going to be troubles, things are going to have issues, we're going to have problems, and we're going to lose heart. You know what, brothers and sisters, it is hard for me to see as a pastor families who lose heart and give up on Christ and the church. It's hard to see our children who lose heart. They were young. You remember when they're little, they come to Sabbath school and they get all dressed up, but then they hit teenage years and the devil comes in like a flood and he tries to wash them away and they lose heart and they give up. They say, that's it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what you have, mom and dad, and I'm looking at what the world has, and I lose heart on you, mom and dad, because I think the world has something better for me, only to find out that once you get out there, it's a cold world, amen? It's a cold, mean, cruel, vicious world. Young people don't get caught up into it. Don't lose heart. That we ought to pray and not lose heart. Because he knows that as things get worse, people have a tendency to give up. We have that in churches. We as pastors deal with it. We have members always changing place to place. Why? Because they gave up on that church. I don't like that church. That church did 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 did. That person did did. <laughs> Notice what he's saying here. He's saying as it gets towards the last days, you need to hold on Pray continuously and don't lose heart. What does it mean? Does it mean to not lose heart means that we accept that it's okay that what was being done and that's just the way it is? No. Lose heart means that you give up, but Jesus is saying don't lose heart. Hold on. Why? Because I am God and I will make it right in my time. And then we get to the parable. 
right? It's, it's unlike any of the other parables you have in here. You, you don't have one like this. It says here that uh, in verse 2, there was a certain city. You remember we've already kind of talked about that usually you don't have a lot of names and details, right? And the reason why Jesus does this is because he doesn't need you to focus on the city and miss the point of the parable. You, you don't need to focus on the name of the person to miss the event, the miracle. And that's why the Bible, in its inf- wonderful wisdom, leaves out names and places because he's trying to get a point across, and it's not the name of the city, all right? So he says, there was a certain city, in a certain city, a judge. Now, notice the description here. Who did not fear God, nor regard man. Now, there was a widow in the city and came to him saying seven words, depending on your translation. Some translations, you only have five. Seven words. Seven simple words that brothers and sisters apply to you and to me living in the last days. So be sure and listen to what she's saying. Because Jesus gave this parable for a reason. He is telling this for a purpose. He is saying that, look, in the last days, you're going to have issues. Now, this parable is for you, brother, for me, sister, brother, sister. This is for us. And what does the woman say? What does the widow say? She's a widow. Her husband's been taken away. Did he die? Did he get sick? We don't know. Jesus is saying it's a widow. It's interesting that when you look at this, it's a parable, right? What does a woman represent in Bible prophecy? What does the woman represent in the Bible? It's the church. Notice he says here, he didn't say a man, he didn't say a young man, he said a widow, he said a woman. There was a woman, there was a church that was saying these simple words. Coming to the judge, she said, get justice for me from my adversary. Wow. Wow. Okay, Lord, simple words. Get justice for me for my adversary. She says simply, get justice for me for my adversary. Now, the Bible does not tell us what it is that she needs justice for or who the adversary is. So we have to unpack that to understand. So here now, when we talk about justice, what does it mean? Because this parable really turns on two key themes, justice and perseverance. What is justice? What does it mean to get justice? What do we need to have justice that's found in a number of places in here because, you know, sometimes we have this idea that God is not fair. Show me a passage in the Bible where it ever says that God is fair. It's not there. We have to understand God is not fair. God is just. Oh, now there's something you got to dwell on. Because it's not fair that I didn't get this. It's not fair that this happens. It's not fair that this took place. It's not fair that I lost this job. I lost this loved one. It's not fair. that. Well, where did you see it ever explained to you that life is going to be fair? So if you're coming to God asking God to be fair, you're asking the wrong question. You need to ask the question that this woman is asking lord get justice for me now that's what we want let me ask you this some person drunk kills your child they go to jail was that the fair thing is that the just thing how does that ever resolve the issue that okay that person's in jail but does that person going to jail ever bring your child back again is that Does that sentence ever heal the pain of the lost person in your life? We want justice. Uh, That's a big theme in 2020, isn't it? It's not fair. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that it is going to be a life of being fair. She doesn't say, Lord, it was unfair what happened, so please Uh, take care of my adversary. She doesn't ask. She said, get me justice. Understand this, that God says, I will bring justice in my time. And some of us are going to have to wait until the second coming for justice to take place. That's why this parable is so important, because how long did this woman 
keep going to get justice. You see, we go maybe one time, two times, have a couple of situations, give me justice, justice didn't happen. Well, you know what? I don't need God anyway. Because he didn't give me the justice I thought he was supposed to give. He didn't give it in the time frame in which I expected him to give it to me. But this is not what it's talking about. It's saying you need to hold on. You need to be persistent. When will you get justice? Some of us won't get justice until the second coming of Jesus. But hold on until the second coming. Hold on. Get justice. And then it says here, from my adversary. Who is the adversary? Who's the adversary? The Bible is clear. The devil. How has he been working in your life? And if it's not clear to you, know this, that as you become closer to Jesus and study more in the Bible and get a deeper relationship with him, and as we get closer to the second coming, he as an adversary will intensify because he doesn't want you in the Bible. He doesn't want your children in the church. He doesn't want your relationship growing with Jesus. And so he's going to become more intense. You see here that this lady is simply saying, get justice for me from my adversary. Now let's talk about the judge. This judge is not a Christian. This judge is not a man who fears God. The Bible says here, he does not regard man. And when this lady came, he did not give her any justice. But this widow had the characteristic of which we're talking about, and that's persistent, and she kept coming back. So he ignores her, ignores her, ignores her, and then finally it says here, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she wearies me. Now, we've got to pause for a moment because Jesus is trying to illustrate something here. He is saying that if this person who is a human, who doesn't fear God, who's not a Christian, who's an unjust judge, if he, if this person will give justice to this poor widow, because you understand in the Bible, you know, it talks a lot about widows, right? Widows are the most helpless Because this person, she doesn't have children, she doesn't have a husband, she has nobody to take care of. And in this time, in this period, to be a widow could be very difficult, could be very challenging. She doesn't have property because there's no man there to help her. She has all, she is this. You know, the Bible even says pure religion is this. Remember what it says? To help what? The fatherless in what? The widow. So here we have this story of this poor widow here and this judge that could care less about her. But God says, if this judge will take care of her, how much more will God take care of you? You know, I like how he illustrates that. He takes over here to the extreme. He says, if this cruel man will help the widow, why would you think that God won't take care of you in his time? And there's where it comes down to, friends. That's what faith is about. Trusting that the Lord knows the end from the beginning. He makes a powerful statement. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Those are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. That means everything in between there, that's who God is. And if he says, I'll take care of it, just like that unjust judge did, don't you think that a loving, compassionate God, and see, that's where the devil gets us confused. He wants you to think that he's not a loving, compassionate God. He wants you to think what this judge is, is who God is. And that's why we give up. Why would God care about you anyway, right? That's what the devil would have you to believe. Notice it goes on and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? That passage opens up where we need to be today, brothers and sisters. Understand the bigger picture. And I say this so many times. We get confused because we look at our lives, our families, our church, we look everything through the narrow, selfish vision of our own lives. And then we think that God should be forced into this narrow, selfish view and judge everything based on ours. You need to open up and understand that God is on the throne 
and he has every person on this earth in the palm of his hands, and he is trying to bring salvation to every single person. So if he allows something to happen to you, know this. He is God. He'll take care of it. He'll make it right at some point, but hold on to him. We think because God allows something to happen that therefore God doesn't care about us. Shame on us. He says here, Shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? You see, we're asking for justice in this world today. Well, guess what? They've been asking for justice ever since Cain killed Abel. We're in a world of injustice. We're in a world where God says, hold on to me because sometimes I'm able to right away give you the satisfaction of the justice you need. Sometimes, the majority of times, we're going to have to wait until the second coming of Jesus. So you need to be like the widow who persistently, stubbornly, obstinately holds on in faith to God and says, you know what, Lord? Yea, though you slay me, Yet will I trust you. And let me tell you what, brothers and sisters, this parable with this mindset, with this type of life, is connected right in chapter 18, following chapter 17, dealing with the last days. And why? Because he knows the majority of us here will never make it because we're not there. And that's my message today is, brothers and sisters, it's time to get there. It's time to get there. It's time to get into a mindset that I am holding on to the hand of God and ask God to please help me because we need to understand we have an adversary. We've got to hold on to the hand of God because the adversary is working. He's working against our marriages. He's working against our children. He's working against our church. And he's going to work against us individually in our relationship with God as we have been talking about as we rush towards the last days. There's going to be a death decree if you don't go along with what everybody else is doing. Let me tell you what, it's going to take some faith to get you through that. I was just reading the other day how Amazon and Walmart are just swallowing up everything. Have you seen that? Do you think that's without a purpose? Because by it swallowing up everything, all the little shops are closing, just wiping them out. How can you compete? And I'm guilty. I like Amazon, don't you? Boy, I I could right now, during this sermon, if it was lawful. It's the Sabbath. I don't buy or sell on the Sabbath. I could. I could right now. Boom, boom, boom. Some things would be here by tomorrow morning. No mama and papa shop can handle with that. But why? So that way, we have the Costco's and the Amazon's, and we have all of these things that are controlling everything. And if you don't fit in, you cannot buy or sell. Do you have the faith to go through that? When your children are crying, when you're hungry, when you're in a situation, Jesus is telling us as we get closer to the last days, there will be things going on that are going to get more and more intense. Now is the time to develop the faith that says, I'm going to hold on to God, and I'm going to trust that God is going to give me uh, uh, justice against my adversary, because as we rush through this, we're going to get history unfolds, hostility is going to increase against God's people. Well, let me tell you what, if you say you're a Christian, then you're saying that you're part of God's people. But God has said, I will give you justice. Hold on. Don't give up. Have you given up on your children? Have you given up on your husband? Have you given up on your wife? Have you given up on your mom, your dad? Have you given up on the church? Now, we talk a lot about our family, but understand that uh, if you read an interesting text in Ezekiel 9.4, it's interesting that Ezekiel writes in there that God says, go place a mark on those who sigh and cry for the abominations that are done in Israel. Do you understand what he's just saying there? See, we, again, need to understand that if we are selfishly praying for ourselves only, you're going to be challenged to continue on. 
Because if we are connected with God, we're in love with Jesus, we will love what Jesus loves, and Jesus loves our brothers and sisters. Jesus loves our neighbors. Are you persistently praying for your neighbors? I'm going to go out here on a limb. Are you persistently praying for our current president? Are you consistently praying with our president-elect? A lot of it uh, got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> got quiet in here. Are you persistently praying for the governor? Are you persistently praying for the mayor of the five boroughs? Is he the mayor of Long Island? Oh, look at you guys. Shame on all you. Yeah. I don't even know who the mayor of Long Island is. He's not, uh, he, he's not on the news every day like the other ones are, are they? Yeah. <clears throat> Understand that that can be a gauge for you. There's a challenge. That can be a gauge for you to see where you are and how ready you are for the second coming of Jesus. Because if you're at the place where you say, well, of course I'll pray for my children, but for them, never. You're not ready for heaven. The moment you enter into where I will pick and choose who I will pray for, who is worthy to receive my prayer, you're in a lost position, brothers and sisters. What makes you think you're worthy to pray for someone in that you're... Oh, no, 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 no. Here this widow comes, get justice for me, for my adversary. And God says, look, you hold on, I will get justice for you. And for many of us, it will not happen until the second coming of Jesus. So beware of it. Understand it. Don't be shocked by it. Don't be surprised about it. Say, well, I never got justice. Well, then that means you let go, which Jesus said, don't let go, because in my time, I will give it to you. In my time, I will take care of it. In my time, I will make it right. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. Did Job get justice? He didn't understand what was going on. He didn't understand what was going on. They killed his children. Are you ready to hold on to God when they killed your children? They killed his children. But the Bible says he had more children, and in heaven, he will have all of his children together. In heaven. You see, brothers and sisters, the Bible is clear here in this parable. It's saying that we've got to hold on and we've got to persist. It does not say that we accept the evil and that it's okay. As a matter of fact, we should speak out against it. We should be vocal against these things. But understand that we are in the world of the devil. The devil has been called, this is his world. Now, God overrides according to his will for the salvation of our soul, not for your own purpose. That's a deep one right there. And many of us today aren't ready to accept that. God overrides for the salvation of souls. Yeah, I like that. The Lord says, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own who cry out? Do you know where else you find God's people crying out? It's in Revelation chapter 9. In Revelation chapter 9, it talks about the, the people of God. In Revelation chapter 9 verse 10, it says, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? That's in Revelation, last days. God's people cry, how long? Because it just seems like there's nothing changing. It seems like it just goes on and on. This year is incredible. But if you think this was bad, wake up, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And it shouldn't surprise us that we're having these types of years. And it also should not be one of those years that pushes us away from God, but instead should drive us closer to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, we are holding on to you. We've got to, Lord, get justice for me from my adventure. Some of us lost loved ones this year. Lord, get justice for me. He said, I will. Second coming. Some of us have had some horrible experiences happen to us. Lord, get justice for me. Hold on. I will. Just like 
the saints under the altar in Revelation 9.10. Oh, sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge the earth? Soon, though, brothers and sisters, glory to God, soon Jesus is going to stand up. Soon he's going to stand up. And he's going to say, that's it. Revelation puts it this way. Let the unjust be unjust still. Let the unrighteous be unrighteous. Righteous still. Let the filthy be filthy still. Let the righteous be righteous. He's going to say, and then that's it. And let me tell you, the Bible, it, it's going to go quick. If you think this year was fast, it's going to go quick with these things. And if we're not people who are learning like this widow, who are learning like blind by Emmaus, like the woman who had the issue of blood, we're going to be swept away. Brothers and sisters, don't let that happen. Be persistent. Don't get up. Don't give up. I want to, I want to end with this. Because I thought this text has always, it's always, uh, it's just been one of those texts I dwell on a lot. Notice the last one. Verse 8, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. And notice this, he's talking about the last days. He's talking about the second coming. We wrestle about what we need, what we don't need, what should we follow. Notice this, it says, verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes... Will he really find faith on the earth? That's a telling text. When the Son of Man comes, he didn't say, when the Son of Man comes, will he find people sitting in the pews at a church? He doesn't say, when the Son of Man comes, will he find just the vegetarians? He doesn't say, when the Son of Man comes, will he find those who are keeping the commandments of God. He says, simply, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Because when we accept Jesus in faith, all the other things happen, but it begins by a faith in God. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is alive today? Then our lives should be living it. Do you believe that Jesus is coming the second time? Then let me ask you, brothers and sisters, are you making the adjustments in your home and your family that are in harmony with God's word so that we can be ready when he comes? We have to stop and take a look and say, what am I doing in my life? How does this help me get ready for the second coming of Jesus? Let me tell you, if you've got these issues, you've been thinking about it, well, we need to adjust it. Now's the time to adjust it. Now's the time to remove it, to add it, whatever it takes to get ready. Because when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find people who, like this widow, who says, Lord, I'm going to keep coming back to you until you give me justice over the devil? And not get swept away. I get swept away. In a book called Christ Object Lessons, it says, Christ, our example, did nothing to vindicate or deliver himself. He committed his case to God so his followers are not to accuse or condemn or to resort to force in order to deliver themselves. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? You see, as Jesus was in, you know, in this, para- this, this, uh, this uh, story, this is really a, a parable that really talks about what was just about to happen with Jesus, right? He went before an unjust judge. Did he get his justice on that day? Did Jesus get justice on that day? No. As a matter of fact, that, that whole picture was the most unjust court appearance in history but he quietly sat there and says i follow my father he only spoke when it was to validate his connection with his father and the rest he just let it go brothers and sisters the adversary the devil is alive and he's working and we have to have persistent faith we need to have a connection with god that will help us to go through what's coming on this earth Let all who are afflicted or unjustly used cry out to God. Turn away from those whose hearts are as steel and make your requests known to your maker. Never is one repulsed who comes to him with a contrite heart. What a powerful, never is one turned away. 
God hears the cries of the weakest human being. We pour out our heart's desire in our closet. We breathe the prayers we walk by the way, and our words reach the throne of a monarch of the universe. They may be inaudible to human ear, but they cannot die away into silence nor can they be lost through the activities and, or business that is going on. Nothing can drown the soul's desire. It raises above the din of the street, above the confusion of the multitude, to the heavenly courts. It is God to whom we are speaking, and our prayer is heard. Hear the story of the unjust judge. The widow came with seven words, get me justice. And Jesus said, look, if that evil man would give justice, how much more would a compassionate, loving God give justice? He says, I tell you this parable that you don't faint and lose heart, but that you hold on. Hold on and not give up. Persistent faith. How? Oh, what is it? This widow demonstrated it. Continuing firmly or obstinately. This is a woman who was obstinate, right? We need to be a church that is obstinate in our belief to Jesus Obstinately in a course of action, in spite of difficulty or opposition. Faith is trust or confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, may you have that faith. May we as a church have that faith. May you who are watching with us online have this faith. Persistent faith that says, I will hold on to the hand of God and I'm not letting go, no matter what happens around us. And as we come closer to the second coming of Jesus and it becomes more intense, I am holding on to the hand of Jesus. Like the widow who said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Like Bartimaeus who they told him. Then they, they said, be quiet, man. He doesn't have time for you. And when they told him to be quiet, what happened? He got louder. Amen. Now is the time for Seventh-day Adventists. <laughs> I like how Nina and Lucas. It's okay to what? Be SDA. It's okay. God needs you to stand up today. God needs you to be persistent. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for the presidents. Pray for the people around us. Pray for your family. And don't give up. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Father in heaven, thank you for these two life stories and parable about persistent faith. I pray that it will encourage us and strengthen us. This parable today, Father, fits in the time in which we live. And a time that is so relevant to us, this, this parable speaks to us. In a world where justice is what we are seeking, there is only one who can grant it, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. In a world where the adversary seems to be winning, overwhelming, destroying, killing, breaking, we have the Lord Jesus who can heal, who can strengthen who can empower. But Lord, we have to have persistent faith. We have to hold on. Lord Jesus, give us the strength. I pray for the mothers and fathers who have been interceding for their children that they will press on. I pray for the husband or the wife who has been praying for their spouse that they will pray on. I pray for the family that is praying for their parents that they'll pray on. I ask for those of us that are lifting up our neighbors in prayer, that are lifting up our communities in prayer, lifting up the political arena that we're in in prayer, that we will pray for these individuals because lives are being snuffed out every second, rushed into eternity, forever lost. Lord Jesus, we know that you want to bring salvation. Use us to not only pray for our own souls, but for all of those around us, that we'll be persistent like the widow says, Lord, give me justice. And your promise is, I will give you justice. Hold on. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that message and for that series. It's been an enjoyable series. Um, we definitely all need that persistent faith. You know, one of the things I miss um, about this COVID uh, coming to church, uh, I miss congregational singing. I really do. This would have been the time that we would sing a congregational hymn. And 
Um, I like the words from the old hymn, uh, number 608. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. O oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Let's bow our heads for the benediction. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this blessing and this privilege to be able to worship you and to uh, learn more of you. Continue, Lord, to increase our faith in these last days. Help us to hold strong and to hold fast to you because there's no other way, Lord, that we can make it through. Bless each and every one of us as we go, as we travel along the roadways, as we go about our daily walk, and as we continue to grow in and live with this pandemic, Lord, continue to protect us on each and every side. Let your angels encamp us and continue to go before us and make our way straight. Bless and keep each and every family and bless each and every member of this old Westbury Church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs>